Good evening, saints. This is Wilbur Robinson, pastor of the Grace Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith. We're located at 1 Coleman Avenue, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. Just wanted to stop by again, drop off a little, another little nugget of truth. Hopefully it uh, will help somebody to get an understanding of what we should be doing, how we should be doing it, and for whom. <laughs> because if we're not doing it for God, it's not going to work for us. Uh, the reason I'm coming tonight uh, is just that it's, it's, it's incumbent upon me to just share this as the Lord laid it on me. Um, we want to make sure that what we're doing is pleasing to God, and we, we want to make sure that we're coming uh, in in a way that is pleasing to God, so that He can use us to draw people. And uh, we're not going to draw them. Well, I tell you what, we're going to draw them. Our lives are going to influence people one way or the other, either for wrong or right. So that's why the Lord put His Spirit in us and called us to be His ambassadors here on earth, so that we can live a godly life before the world so that they can see a light and be drawn to the Lord through the life that he has put into his his uh, believers, that those of us who are following him in accordance with his, his word by faith. So again, this is a sensitive area and I'm, 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 it is. It, it causes a lot of disturbance uh, amongst the saints because we're so used to doing things our way, we feel like our way is all right. And uh, we go to church, we say a lot of the right things, we use the right words, and uh, we use the Lord's name. But somewhere in the scripture it says that they, they, they uh, honor me uh, with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You know, and so we don't, we don't want to just be giving out lip service. We have to demonstrate, saints, that we are godly men and women. And I'm going to touch on this tonight. And it is reference to holy dress code. Okay. Uh, there's a way that we are to appear before people as children of God. And I want you to keep in mind that when we go into uh, dressing ourselves uh, when we when we choose what we're going to dress there's a there's a reason there's a purpose for what we pick out and how we want to appear before the public and it's important that we understand that everything that we put on every appearance that we take out into the world is not necessarily pleasing to God and I know that you will say okay the Lord is not looking at the outer man, he looks at the heart. But I want you to understand something. If the heart is in the right place with God, then the outer man is going to demonstrate what's coming out of the heart, okay? That inner man will dress up the outer man. So I just want to go into the scripture. I want to read something in First Timothy, and you all have been there, so I'm not taking any place you haven't been. But I want to read something in First Timothy, and then I want to read something in First Peter. And then I want to go to Ezekiel, uh, 16th chapter of Ezekiel, and I also want to go to Isaiah, the third chapter. Now, here's what we're doing. This, what we're going to begin with, is New Testament teaching. Okay, it's New Testament teaching. Paul is teaching the church. You know, he's teaching Timothy and 1 Timothy, and he's teach and Peter is, is teaching the church in, in Peter. But this didn't just start in the New Testament. It was, goes all the way back to the Old Testament. And there's a reason that we are supposed to present ourselves in a special way that reflects godly lives as opposed to sinful lives. Okay, so let's go into this. And I uh, just want to read through these scriptures and spend a minute, you know, in them. But I want you to understand this is Bible and it is intended for you and it's intended for me and for everybody else who is professing godliness. Okay, so here's where we're going. All right, so let's do it. First Timothy 2, and I'm just going to begin reading at verse 8. Okay, and it says here in verse 8, it says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Now here's where I want you to listen to. Ninth verse. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, 
sobriety, not broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Say, listen, that's, that's what that's the Bible. That's the Bible. I mean, it, that's what God wants. And we're going to see why when we go back into the Old Testament. But again, he says here, uh, uh, adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness huh? and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with all good works. So you see what's happening here? Huh? Look, we can dress up the way we want to dress up, but we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing this? What are we doing it for? And who are we doing it for? And trust me, there's a reason we dress the way we dress. Huh? The world dresses the way they dress. Hey, look, at, look at the different fashions in the world. Okay, the young uh, gangsters, the young gang bangers, you can tell them, huh? They dress so that you can know that they're a gang banger. Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, those people who, who practice homosexuality, you can tell them. You, they, they want you to know, and they put on clothes, or they, and they put on appearance that you will know that, yes, I'm this and I'm that. Uh, uh, you look at, uh, you know, let's look at the, the football players, baseball players. They all have their own different colors, their own car, their own uniforms to identify their team. And it's the same way with, with, with in the world. Police officers dress to, to be identified as a police officer. Firemen dress in a, in a, in a, uh, to uh, be identified as a fireman. Okay, uh, the, 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 uh, professional world and in, uh, in, in business, you know, so a certain business uh, attire is, is, is suited for certain types of business. And I'm, you know, it's, but what I'm saying is there's, there is a reason that we put on what we put on and there's a reason that we decorate our exterior so that we can be identified with a certain class or a certain group. Huh? And because well, number one, we, we see it, we like it, and we want to be a part of it, okay? So that's what, and that's just it in a nutshell. And we can say what we want to say, but God knows the reason we're doing what we do. And it's very important that if what we're doing, if our dress, if our appearance, if the, what we're doing when we go out in the public, the image that we portray has a message, okay? And it's got to be a message that is drawing people to the Lord, huh? and not identifying me in any other form or any other way, okay? And I know this is not popular, but I just read it. You heard it. It says, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now, again, this is talking about women, but men have an, ob uh, an uh, obligation to, to dress in a godly manner as well, okay? I mean, the reason this is talking about women so much, and you'll see it a little bit down, down there a little further, but women have a, a, a power. Women have an attraction huh? that can cause men to get in a lot of trouble. Listen, I don't know this, this old, old, uh, old Testament uh, teacher's name, but his name was come up, I believe, in one of the books in Enoch uh, that wrote. But he was one of, the, one of the, the, the fathers, you know, and one of the scholars. And he was saying, uh, you know, this, he said that the women, okay, women are going to be the gateway to hell. <laughs> you know, we're talking about, you know, the, 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 the allure uh, of, of the women, the attraction and beauty and, and just the very nature. God made women a special way and God made women so that they could uh, draw attention of the man, okay? Because the whole idea is for men to be attracted to to women and get themselves wives, okay? <laughs> you, you get themselves wives so that they can come together, you know, and reproduce. Huh? And listen to this, saints of God. If given, if, if having, making children, uh, if that was a painful, something that was uh, like root canal without, without, uh, uh, without having Novocaine or whatever painkiller, uh, you wouldn't see a whole lot of children. Uh, this this intercourse be, that was given to married couples was designed to encourage them to come together to reproduce children. 
Huh? So that's why that's why you hear people uh, that are opposed to same-sex marriages. They can't do that. All they can do is have the feel-good thing, but they cannot produce. And if God gave made man and he made woman so that they could come together and reproduce uh, so that the humankind would not become extinct on the earth. Uh, so we, that's what this is all about. Now, the woman, okay, by nature, uh, she doesn't have to do a thing. By nature, she is made and designed to get the attention of the man. That's it, okay? And that's it. And any man that's out here, if he's in his right mind, will tell you that that's true. And you don't have to do anything to make yourself look different. Because just being a woman, <laughs> you're going to get some attention. All right, so I got off on that. But I want you to understand something. It's not about how you dress yourself to do this or that. Huh? The Lord wants us to dress ourselves Men and women wants us to dress ourselves in a way that's going to draw attention to him. Huh? That's how we present our bodies, that living sacrifice. Hmm? Holy. Okay. Now, if we go up there and, and out of uniform, it's not holy. Huh? It, well, that's, all right. That's what I'm talking about. So, again, let the one, I don't go down. All right. Just listen, listen, listen to this again. Uh, ninth verse. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, there goes your braids, daughters, or gold, there goes the jewelry decoration, pearls, same thing, and costly array, there goes the expensive exotic outfits. Huh? Just dress in modest apparel. Huh? Put on modesty. Huh? That shamefacedness, you know what you say? And the Bible is saying here, look, in this shamefacedness, we want to dress so that well, people will read our face. Huh? Huh? Not the decorations on it, not all the paint and all the things that we put on it to look like a Christmas tree. I'm talking about draw attention to the face. We're not supposed to be, uh, the women are not supposed to be flirtatious. A woman should want a man to pursue her, huh? not her pursuing him. Huh? But now a woman is smart. She don't know how to, if she got her eye on somebody, huh? she. If, she, if she's smart, and even a godly woman, she knows how to get the attention of that one that she might want. And she don't have to take her clothes off to do it either. Uh, <laughs> that's why the Lord said, shame faceless. Huh? Yeah. Listen, a man wants a woman who has some uh, uh, self-esteem. That's what I want to say. He, he wants, a, a, you know, it, listen, let me tell you this. I went to the gas station one time. I was driving a church bus. And the young man asked me, he said, you got many uh, young women at your church? I said, yeah, there are a few. He said, how do they look? I said, they're nice looking women. They're just godly women. He said, well, that's what I want. I want me a, I want me a church woman, you know, because somebody who won't cheat on me and go out on me, you know, even if I go out and do this and do that. But, you know, I want to go out and do what I want to do, but I want to come home and have somebody there that's going to be, you know, one, you know, is somebody's going to be faithful and true to me. That, that, that's man's mentality. That's the world's mentality. But the reason I tell you that is that the image of the decorated woman, okay, that image represents something else. And you're going to see it down here. It represents something else. There's a certain class of women that dress themselves and decorate themselves and spruce themselves up for the purpose of drawing attention of the man. Okay. And there's, it's a business. <laughs> there's a business that, that allows, that causes them, if you will, to dress in a certain way, to expose themselves, to make themselves appealing. And when, in fact, man don't want to marry that woman. Uh, he wants to marry a chaste woman. Uh, that's what he wants. Uh, all right. That's what you hear. So again, uh, let's go over to Peter. Peter's going to say the same thing. So I'm just, I'm just taking you to Peter. We just heard from Timothy. I'm going to take you to Peter. Uh, first Peter and the third chapter, it says here, I'm going to read in the first verse here. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the lives, the lifestyle of the wife. Mm -hmm. He's saying, look, if, 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 uh, 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 likewise, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if, uh, if that if any obey not the word. So this is what he's saying. 
Look, if you got a if you got a husband that's contrary, you don't want to come to the Lord, you know, because women usually come sooner than men. But he's saying here, if you have a life that is led by God, you're going to demonstrate that. You're going to you're going to be led by the Spirit of God. You're not going to be dressing to draw attention from other men to you because you're you're look. The only person who should see you, huh? Is, is this should see and you should be dressing for is your husband and the Lord. Okay, yeah, that's how you should dress. You should not be dressing so that other men can see you and be attracted to you. Huh? All right, I'm telling you because this is between you and your husband and God. Now, if you don't have a husband, you dress chaste, modest. Why? Because you're trying to get one, huh? and you want one that wants you. Uh, not what you have to offer. Because, uh, see, people on here are just trying to get something for nothing. Okay. So what I'm saying to you, saints of God, listen. Here, let me just read the rest of this. All right. Then likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any be not, uh, obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wife. So he's not living right, and he's not trying to follow the word. But there's something about a godly woman living a godly life, a wife, huh, that's going to get that man's attention. And eventually the Lord can use that life to turn that husband around. Okay, But you do it in a godly way. You be modest. Huh? You have some pride about yourself. You have some self-esteem about yourself. You cover up your naked body. <laughs> yeah. Because your husband is going to know that, look, you know, I might be a skunk, but at least she ain't out there trying to catch somebody else. Huh? No, she's living a godly life for God, and it's going to reflect to her feelings, her attitude toward her husband. Listen, while they obey your chaste conversation coupled with fear, there, there you go, who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, all right, now, of wearing of gold, you heard it before, or putting on of apparel. But listen to this, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. He is. That's what God is interested in. Huh? He don't want you decorating yourself to go out and be uh, a community property. Huh? <laughs> uh, you, you look, you, you dress and you conduct yourself in a godly manner, in a meek and a quiet spirit. And a person who has a meek and demonstrates that meekness and that quietness is not going to want to flaunt themselves. No. They're not going to want to fund themselves. And now where does this come from? This comes from what we see out there in the world. We see this, we see that. Now when the enemy has brought it into the church, so we see decorated people coming to church. They come into the church house. Hmm? They, they come in, uh, they, they got all these things on. Look at, you look, go into the church now. Look, look on, on uh, uh, maybe look on the, uh, the YouTubes or TVs and look at the gospel choirs and look at uh, uh, the, 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 the people who are supposed to be representing God. Look at what they look like. Huh? They look like if they could look, they could leave the church and go to a cabaret and fit in. Just leave the Bible in the car and pick up the drink when they get in the cabaret. The, the body of Christ is not supposed to look like the world. Huh? That's what we did in the world, those things. We dressed ourselves in the world. We wanted to look like the world. And that's where we get these things from, is from the world. These things are entered. Look, this decorating, I'm going to read it to you. This decorating and, and painting and decorating ourselves for men and women. Now, the, men, the women, the men now are going to become with the long braids and with the earrings and all the noses and the tattoos and stuff. They want to do that, too, because it appeals to them from somebody watching somebody else. But I'm telling you, this was introduced to humanity by demons, the demons from hell. OK, that's where they came from. And the and the de the lead demon, according to Enoch, his name was Azazel, huh? Azazel, A Z E Z E L, huh? That's who it was. Huh? He was the one who taught women about makeup and jewelry and and all that stuff. Huh? And and it goes on to say in Enoch that these things, as they came into humanity, it corrupted everything. Huh? It corrupted corrupted all of God's intent for humanity. So we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. All right. Now, it's, 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 there's a reason that God wants us to be separate. There's a reason 
that God wants us to separate ourselves from the world so that we can be represent him and what he intends for mankind. Okay, now let me just read this again. I'm going to move on. Who's adorning? Third verse, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. That's what I'm talking about. If this thing is in the heart, then you're going to, you're going to appear godly if God is in your heart. Huh? So let it be the hidden man of the heart. That's why we were born again. Huh? Men and women, we're supposed to represent Jesus Christ in the way we do everything. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Wearing over gold, putting over power, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Okay, and if you daughters don't have a husband, you got to get ready for one. Okay, so you start now. So he will see you. He will he will represent. He will recognize you as a godly woman, and he's going to make his move. Okay, <laughs> so you just be be careful. All right, listen, real quick. We're almost done, but I want you to hear this, and I want you to think about it, and I want you to consider it for yourself, because we have gone so far from what God wants for us that we have to really examine and just examine, take a self examination. We need the Bible to tell us what is expected of us, and it'll tell us why it's expected of us, and then we have to pursue that thing. Uh, because, there, again, there is nothing outside of the Word of God that you need in your life. No, no, no. Nothing that the God brought us out of do we need. We leave it all over there. Uh, leave it all over there. Okay, here we go. I want to read to you from Isaiah. Isaiah, the third chapter of Isaiah. And this is the Lord is, 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 has Isaiah upbraiding the daughters of Zion. And you're going to see why and see what happened here. Okay, and listen. Uh, number one, the, uh, the, the number one, the daughters of Zion had, had been blessed. I, you'll see it. I, well, just let me read. You'll see what's going on. All right, it says 16, verse 3 and 16. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion, here we go, are haughty. Huh? That means they got proud, high-minded, huh? and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Huh? This, excuse me. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a cab the crown of the head and the daughters of Zion, and the, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Listen. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, and the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the, uh, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins. The, glass, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girdle of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Listen, and why is this? Because they became haughty, high-minded, self-centered, and self-worshipping. That's what happened. Huh? That is what happened. And because of this, the Lord said, I'm going to, I'll fix them. I'm going, everything that I gave them, I'm going to take it away. Mm -hmm. And then they won't be so proud. They won't be so high-minded. Because I'm the one that gave it to them. I'm the one that set them up. I'm the one that made them this great nation and gave them all of this, this beauty and these fine uh, clothes to wear and the jewelry and all. Look, the Lord gave it to him. But why is he wanting to take it away now? Because of the pride. That's all I'm talking about. The pride is what made Isaiah have to tell Israel what he's telling them over here now. Now let's go to Ezekiel. And you're going to hear basically the same thing 
but it's going to give you a little bit more detail because the Lord is going to really get into detail <laughs> over here in Ezekiel because he gave Ezekiel this same charge uh, because God said, look, I'm the one that sets you up and I'm the one that deserves all the praise, all the glory and all the honor. And when I brought you into this world, you weren't decorated with all this mess. I brought you into this world. And the reason these demon angels came in after you is because you were beautiful to look on because that's the way I made you. So you don't need to do anything to make yourself beautiful or attractive to men. I already did it for you. <laughs> so listen, these things that we add to make God, make ourselves appear to be better, huh? it's just what Satan is doing. Satan is saying, look, God is keeping something from you. Look what you can do this to make yourself more beautiful. Or you can do this to make yourself more appealing. No. Huh? That's what the devil did in, out there with, with Adam and Eve. Huh? He went out there and, and, and slicked them with this, this subtlety that, you know, as if God is keeping something from them. Uh, you're not going to surely die <laughs> because God knows that if you eat, if you're going to be like God's. You know, you, you're going to understand some things that the Lord is holding back from you. So now he's telling the daughters of Zion that, look, you can look even more beautiful. Huh? Uh, you, you could look even more beautiful if you do this or do that. No, the Satan has never done anything good for you. And he's not going to because he can't, huh? because he hates you. That's what you listen to me. That fellow hates you. All these things he's telling you that you need. Huh? He even tried to tempt the Lord. He took him 40 days and 40 nights. The Lord was out in the wilderness. And that devil came and tempted him, trying to make him, uh, uh, he tried to tempt him with the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Those three things, huh? he tried to tempt him, but the Lord put the word on that fellow. And that's what you need to do. And that's what I need to do. Put the word on the devil when he comes with this mess. Huh? Because none of that huh, is, is, is for God's people. None of it. None of it. None of it. Huh? And this is why the Lord spoke to, to Isaiah to tell them the same thing. He said, look, you tell them this is because of your haughtiness, because of your high mindedness, because of your, your self-righteousness, because you thought you were so much better than everybody else. Then I'm going to take this away from you. I gave it to you. You got stiff necked and pride and proud. Now I'm going to take it back. OK, <laughs> I got to fuss it a little bit. All right, listen. Again here, it says in Ezekiel. Now, this is again, I want you to hear Ezekiel. This is pretty long, but I want you to hear it. It says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. And say, thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pity thee to do any of these things uh, to thee, unto thee, and have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out into the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. All right, now the, the Lord is, is dealing with them as a newborn child, okay? And, you know, custom was uh, if, 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 if a poor family or somebody who was unable to, to bring their child up and to care for the child, they might, you know, just leave their child out in the field somewhere to die. And, you know, and especially if it was a female, uh, because, you know, when you went back then, if, if a woman had a child, and it was a man, they, a man child, they celebrated. But if it was a woman, it was just like, oh, well, you know, it's just a girl. That's that. So the, they would cast her out there. All right, listen. And the Lord is styling Israel as this newborn babe because the Lord, they are not Israelite at this time. He's saying that your nativity came from, the, uh, from Canaan. He said because your father was an Amorite and your mom was a Hittite. So they were Gentile, heathen people. Uh, idol worshiping people and the Lord is getting ready to bring him a people out of a people and now he's representing this this incident as a newborn baby because that's what they are the newborn as they uh, we come you know he, you know even we we're born again we we're born, newborn babes we come we're coming from something that we've never known into something that's that's new to us so here he goes listen to it says again and uh 
No, I said, not five again. None I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loading of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee, this is God talking to Israel. When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yeah, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. I have, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou was increased and, and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments, thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown upon, uh, grown whereas thou was naked and bare. Now listen, God is saying, and listen to this, what he's saying here. He's talking about the nation of Israel now. And he brought them, it was just, a, just a, they were little babies, he brought them. And he, what he did, he washed them up, he cleaned them up, and he nourished them. And he said, look now, uh, I, and, and I've caused you to multiply. Now he said, I'm making a great nation out of you. I'm making a great nation out of you, but you still need something. And I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's putting all this together in your life. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. I mean, look, you're fully grown now. You got full breasts. You're a beautiful woman. But listen to this. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. He said, look, I looked on you, and I loved you. Uh, yes, I did. I, brought, I, look, I kept you from dying. I, I nurtured you. I, brought, I washed you up, and I fixed you up, and you've grown into a beautiful woman. And I'm, I'm, I love you. Now, yeah, listen to it. And when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou became mine. And God said, look, you, 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 you're turning into a fine, fine specimen. And, this, you know, when he, 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 he covered this woman, he covered her. Her nakedness, you know, he put the, a corner of a garment over it, symbol, symbolizing, and look, I'm going to take care of you. So he, and, and he took her and he married her, huh? and she became his. Listen, he said, and he became mine. And now it goes on to say, then I washed thee with the water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee and the ornament of the, and, and the oint, anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also. Now listen, this is what I want you to listen to. And then we're going home. I clothed thee also with broider work, and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and covered thee with silk. I decked thee with also I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck, and I put a jewel in thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thus wast thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Listen, God, this, listen to what I'm telling you. God gave this, all these beautiful ornaments. He just dressed them up. Why? Because he wanted to make a spectacle of them. He wanted to make them an example of his uh, of his uh, nation, his people, and he was going to use them, okay, as a as a as an example to draw in those heathen nations. They were going to look on Israel and know that this, there's a God got to be with them, and that's what he was trying to do. He was he was making him a people. And saints of God, that's who we are in Christ Jesus. That's who the born again believers are in Christ Jesus. We are a set aside people. We are a special people for God's use. Huh? And that's what these people were. They, and God had built him a great nation, a great number of people. And he dressed them up and he dressed them up and they were beautiful and they were decorated and they all, and look, they, 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 they made this, this, this Israel. They put jewels on her and, and a crown on her head. And, and it says they prospered into a great nation. Listen, and thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Huh? How, by, by what? Huh? Which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. The nations looked on her, and she was a fine specimen, beautiful and blessed and prosperous. Huh? God had done this. 
so that he could let other nations know, if you come this way, I'll do this for you. Huh? That's what we were supposed to, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And that's what God had blessed Israel to do. Uh, and he made them. And what did he say here? And that and thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Huh? He was so blessed. He was so beautiful. Huh? And you and you and that that beauty went out. And the beauty went out, and the, and the people around you saw that how great and how beautiful and prosperous you were. Okay, listen. Uh, but thou distrust in thine own beauty. Here we got the problem. And played as the harlot because of thy renown. Because you were so pretty, all of a sudden you start thinking this was you. Huh? All of a sudden you started thinking that all of this was your doing. Huh? And you act as though you you did something to get it. You act as though you did something to deserve it. And that's the way we got folks in the body of Christ now, born again believers, acting like they're better than somebody else. Please, we're all dust. Huh? We are all dust. Huh? We don't have anything to, 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 thank, to praise or boast about because whatever we have, God gave it to us. Huh? And if God gave it to us, it's ours for his purpose. Huh? So that's what he's saying here. And that's why over in Isaiah, that's why Isaiah was told to tell the daughters because they would become haughty. Because they became high-minded, I'm going to take away all this beauty. And this is over here in Ezekiel. This is what God had done for the nation of Israel. And he said, because now, he said, but thou didst trust in thine own beauty and pledged the heart because of thy renown, and poured out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. It was his. Huh? Yeah. Because here's what happened. They began to smell themselves, if you will. Uh, they began to feel like because they had so much that it was them that did it. Uh, after a while, uh, they took their focus off of God. They began to take their their all their the jewels, the clothing that God is blessed them with, fine silk and linen. These, look, God gave them the best that there was to have, but they took it and began to put it on their idols. They began to they began to build idols and start worshiping idols, and they would decorate their idols, their their gods, and decorate them with their, with God with what God gave them. They put their fine linen and their garments on these dead statues. They would put their jewels on these dead statues and dress them up and make them beautiful, just inanimate objects. But they began to fall down and worship them. And you know, he goes on to say, even they began to give their children into, to Moloch to be burned, okay, giving their, their children, and that was an abomination, but they, but be, because they began to start worshiping the heathen, or worshiping the, uh, uh, their God the way the heathens worship. And, well, actually, they weren't worshiping God. They were actually worshiping the, the heathen gods. So they, they, they took up what, what the nations around them were doing, and it broke the Lord's heart is what it did. Uh, and he said, they, look, they started committing fornication and adultery. Huh? They were out there spiritually now. That's what we're talking about, spiritually. And uh, uh, over here, uh, well, let me just go a little bit further. And uh, 16 verse says, And of thy garments thou didst take and deckest thy high places with diverse colors. He says, Playest thou the heart upon the, uh, uh, upon their upon." The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels, and my gold, and my silver, which I had given thee, and madest thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredoms with them, huh? and tookest thou broidered garments, to, and coverest them, and thou hast set them, uh, set mine oil and mine incense before them. Huh? See, God is upset, because they've taken what God has given them for them. Uh, and started giving it to these dumb idols and worshiping these idols, and God is upset with them. And say, this is what I'm trying to get you to see here. I want you to understand that this, when when we when we when we stand in the mirror, putting us getting ourselves ready to go out into public, what do I have on my mind? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Who am I doing what I'm doing for? And 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 and, and what do I expect to get out of it? Okay, now listen, there is only one way to heaven, uh, and it is a straight and a narrow way. 
And we're going to have to all fall into that straight and narrow way and let go of the world. You just have to do it. And it's wrong. The, uh, these braids, it's, it's plain and simple. Broidered hairs, these weaves and, and, and braided hair, huh? it's wrong. It's wrong for God's people now. That's what I'm talking about. God's people. And now, you know, we, it was, it, you can't satisfy this flesh. It was enough to start out with, with hair that looked like my hair, but now all of a sudden I got blue and purple and green and, and blonde braids. And, and you know, it's just a, all down my, the back. And now I, I got men are doing the same thing. And men got the earrings and, and the jewelry. These are things that were spoken against in Timothy and in Peter because they knew that it was because of the pride that would come from these things. We start decorating the flesh and now we want to be seen and recognized and admired for the appearance that we are giving that is given to us by the devil. The devil is telling you this is what you need to do to be a, a to, to be successful, to be a uh, accepted and, and and this is what you have to do. No, you don't have to do anything because listen, when you go out after you paint yourself and paint your nails, paint your, 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 your and flip up your eyelids and do all that stuff and decorate yourself, that's not you, huh? You are actually the person under that mess, huh? You know, so you're not really presenting yourself, huh? You're presenting an image. Uh, an image that you want to be, but that you want to be, you want to be seen, you want to be recognized as a certain, uh, as a part of a certain group or class of people. That's what it is, and God wants us to be represented as child of child of God. One more thing, I'll let you go. I just want to read this to you. This is in the book of Enoch, and it's a uh, oh boy. I didn't have it marked for you, but I want to read it. I was telling you about here he is. Now listen, this is just this is just a short little paragraph, but again, it speaks to what we're talking about today. There has got to be a difference between God's people and the world. Ain't but two things working. We either gonna do it God's way. Or we're going to do it Satan's way. You know, in between. And if we do any of what Satan does, then we're going to miss out with God. Huh? Because all sin, all, all unrighteousness is sin. And there was only one sin that caused the world to fall into iniquity. Huh? And all we're going to take is one. If we don't have everything cleaned up. And if there's something wrong in ours that we're aware of, we got to be working on it. So if we're, if we're working on it. We work out our salvation. We're working on it. I know I got a problem, but I'm working on it. So you might want to come out of these outward decorations. You might want to. All right, listen. Here's Azazel. It's uh, it's uh, in Enoch. It says here, Azazel taught humans to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, and showed them metals of the earth and the art of alchemy and bracelets and ornaments, the use of antimony and paint, the beautifying of the eyes, and the use of all types of precious stones and all sorts of dyes. Then the wickedness and immorality increased, and they, they disobeyed, and everything they did was corrupted. And that was, a, that, was that devil's intent, was to change and corrupt the world from what God intended it. And we are a part of that when we engage in things that the Bible speaks against. Okay, <laughs> that's it. I hope you got something out of it, saints. And look, be serious. Be serious about what you're doing here. Um, look, everything, the things that look good just may not be, but anything that the world is offering, I'm telling you, you need to turn it down. The only thing we need out of the world is necessary things. Give us this day our daily bread. Let God feed you and let God give you natural food and spiritual food. 
And I'm telling you, if we just do that, be content with whatever state you're in. Just slow down and stop running after the world. Let me tell you something. Somebody told me that these these braids and things that you know that's good cost hundreds of dollars. Can you imagine that? Huh? A hundred dollars to put false hair in your head just to be seen by somebody so that they can just throw out a little a complimentary and admiration. Oh, you look so good, huh? Thank you. Huh? And you two hundred dollars poor, you can't pay your rent, huh? You can't pay your rent, you gotta borrow money for gas, but you got painted nails, painted toes, you got false hair, you know, you you're all decorated with earrings and nose rings and belly button rings and, and, and all this mess that's on you to please Satan. And that's who's getting the glory is Satan because you're getting the glory. And if you're drawing attention to your flesh, then you're satisfying what Satan wants for you and not God. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to get off your back right now. But I thank God for that. That word is important. So you take heed to it and may the Lord bless you. And he will if you allow him to. God bless you.